This is a very big event. What's going on actually today is that we have surgeons from around the country uh, and actually some other countries internationally coming together on stat to Staten Island. But, uh, today we're going to fill an auditorium full of very prominent surgeons from around the country and we will go over details of how this procedure is done. Um, the other important thing about this is that uh, there are currently 350,000 plus operations a year that involve the old incision called what I call the zipper, where the sternum is cracked open and patients are laid up for many times three to six months. My goal is to try and get this procedure out to as many surgeons as possible so that we can uh, uh, get this technology out to the patients who need it. Uh, there are lots and lots of patients out there who are suffering many months of disability because of the old uh, incision and we plan to get them moved over to the newer incision so they can have less pain, less disability, get back to work sooner, back to their normal life, whether it's golfing or working. And, uh, and that's my hope, and that's the reason we're holding this conference today, so that we can spread the word, spread the technique, and get everybody involved in it. Um, and as far as uh, that's concerned, I'd also like to introduce Dr. Mark Jarrett, who's our chief medical officer here at Staten Island University Hospital, and is very instrumental in facilitating the uh, development, the research involved, and the infrastructure involved in putting on, uh, developing a procedure like this, and also uh, putting on a meeting like this. So, Thank you, Dr. McGinn. Uh, it's very timely that we're having this press conference uh, when we're also celebrating this year the 150th anniversary of the founding of Staten Island University Hospital. And the logo we've taken for this anniversary is tradition and vision and this technique really represents both. It is the tradition of taking care of the members of our community, which was how the Smith Infirmary when Staten Island University Hospital started back in 1861, uh, where it began, and the vision of innovation and seeing to the future and not just accepting the norm of what everybody says, well, this is the way medical care should be, but doing the research and innovating so that we can bring new techniques, not only again, uh, to our members of our community in Staten Island, but to New York City and beyond. And this outreach that Dr. McGinn is doing with this conference, providing to many people around the country and in other parts of the world, uh, his expertise and the expertise of his team is truly something that fits the mission of Staten Island University Hospital. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I just did want to reemphasize uh, the, the, the people who are attending today are an interesting group of surgeons. They're actually probably the most advanced cardiac surgeons in the country. These are people who are very interested in innovation and technology and changing the shape of the future. Uh, and they're all gathered here today in Staten Island. Not Manhattan, not anywhere else, but right here in Staten Island because this is where it all began. Uh, I think that's why this is such a monumental day. So if anybody has any questions, uh, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. No? I have a question. Yes, sir. In the history of cardiac surgery, where does the McGinn technique? <laughs> you know what? Uh, the books aren't written until many, many years after. So when we pull out a history textbook about the history of cardiac surgery, I'm sure it'll be there. Uh, but just for documentation purposes and so that we can show that it is um, it will be part of the history of cardiac surgery. Um, we have written several articles and published and presented at national meetings about this procedure, which uh, memorializes uh, our accomplishments and makes it a permanent part of the history of surgery. Uh, so going forward, when we do get that textbook, I'm sure that will be referenced at one point or another. How many doctors have you trained? Oh, uh, we're, we're uh, well over 200, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're well over 200, maybe even closer to 300 surgeons have come through here to try and uh, learn how to uh, perform this procedure. And Dr. Jarrett, Staten Island University Hospital has a history, obviously, of some technological advances. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, Staten Island University Hospital has always been on the forefront of many areas. Uh, many of the areas clinically, even over the last uh, 15 or 20 years, we have been on the forefront uh, in terms of having rapid response teams, having uh, full-time intensivists in the hospital. We had a very large hospitalist program before anybody else uh, basically in the metropolitan area had it when it was really only talked about uh, very often in other, other parts of the world and not really in the United States. 
Uh, other techniques have been developed here as well. Uh, and again, it goes along with the tradition that we are really somebody who tries to innovate while at the same time trying to take care of our community, be compassionate, understanding. Uh, many of us are members of this community, so we're not just taking care of patients, we're taking care of our neighbors and have a special feeling, which is I think somewhat unique to this institution versus many other large academic centers uh, and really helps benefit the, the Staten Island community. Can you quickly go over some of the benefits of this procedure versus traditional open heart surgery? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's there's several benefits. Uh, the main ones being that there's no uh, structural, uh, the structural integrity of the chest is maintained. In other words, there's no bones broken, there's no ribs cut, uh, so that the patient can get back to normal activity very quickly. Uh, so, for instance, if you take somebody who is uh, has a family and finds out at the age of 50 that they need to be laid up for three or four months. Financially, that can be a tremendous stress on a, on a family. Uh, that's avoided in this kind of situation. I think also more importantly, there are a lot of people who have comorbidities, other ailments that they're dealing with. They could be physical ailments such as hip uh, arthritis and, and anticipating hip surgery, or they could have other vascular problems like anticipating uh, either carotid artery surgery or abdominal aortic aneurysm surgery. By, by creating a minimally invasive approach, that allows the patient to be able to get through many more uh, medical hurdles uh, in their future. Then there's another group of patients who are just too sick, too sick to actually undergo such a big operation and have that big incision. And we see a lot of those patients, and we're able to help them because we're doing this through a, a very small incision. The patients are getting back to recovering from all their other ailments much quicker. What is the recovery time for this procedure? Um, we, we usually say that the patients have no restrictions when they go home. Uh, with the sternal incision, the, the, the old zipper, if I can call it that, we usually make them uh, stay no driving for six weeks to two months. We also have no lifting for three months. With this procedure, they can get back to normal activity immediately. We have, I've had several patients who within a week of discharge back to their normal work hours. Um, so it is very much a, a quick recovery. You know, I'm, I'm kind of glad you asked that question because we're talking about the technique, we're talking about Dr. McGinn, we're talking about the hospital, but it's really about the patients, and it's the patients who benefit from this. It's not just the science, it's not everything else, but truly the patients are mobilized, able to get out, able to return back to a normal functional life uh, much more quickly, which is very important. Uh, both to them and to their families. So again, uh, it's really about them. It's not about us. One of the concerns of traditional heart surgery is the infection rate. Can you talk a little bit about the infection rate that you've been experiencing? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, as we, as we start looking through the literature and the data that we've been developing on this procedure, we realize some real concrete advantages, and one of them is clearly infection. We had a publication last year in circulation. It's one of the journals of the American... Uh, uh, a cardiology Association, a very big uh, journal. In the journal, it, uh, in that journal article, we looked at our infection rate, which was basically zero for 450 cases, a profound reduction in infection rate. Also on the reverse side, if you're familiar at all with the old zipper incision, that incision is, of, is, uh, is ha does have a, a tendency for infection, and when it does occur, it's a disaster. It's a really big problem. So this is a major step ahead in that arena. Who's um, a candidate for the procedure? You know, uh, when we first started doing this over five years ago, we were limited in who were candidates, and we tried to do what we would consider to be ideal patients. But the technology has gotten so much better, and we've gotten so much better at doing it, and we've refined the procedure. So almost anybody is actually a, a candidate for the procedure at this point.